In this video, we will be taking a look at an example problem on how to construct a frequency table. It is my hope that before watching this video, you have read chapter 2.1 in your textbook. We will be using the data set of 20 values located on the bottom of your screen. The frequency table we construct will include five data ranges, also referred to as classes. In addition, the table will also include midpoints, class boundaries, relative frequency, and cumulative frequency. The main purpose of a frequency table is to take a data set and sort the data into equally spaced data intervals called classes. When we construct these intervals, it's important that they are all the same size. So determining that we want to use five classes in this problem, we then want to calculate the class width. This is the number we will use while creating our five data intervals. Calculating the class width is a two-step process. We first want to use the formula given here in red. And then we will take the result of that calculation and increase the result to the next highest integer. The formula requires us to know the largest data value and the smallest data value, which are 24 and 2 respectively. We subtract those two numbers and divide it by 5, because 5 is the number of classes that we are using in this example problem. The result of that calculation is 4.4, but we want to increase the value to the next highest integer, which would be 5. So our class width for this problem will be 5. Notice that I did not say we will round 4.4. We don't round up or round down. We always increase to the next highest whole number. In the side example, I did a hypothetical calculation where the largest data value was only 22. The result of the class width calculation was 4, but I still need to increase that number to the next highest integer. So the final answer is going to be 5. The reason why we do this is so that we can create 5 equally spaced data intervals while keeping those intervals as small as possible. The next step is to create our data ranges or classes. We first want to create all the lower limits of all five classes. We will start in the first class with the smallest data value 2. We then add the class width to that value to create the next class's lower limit which would be 7. We want to continue to add the class width, creating all the different lower limits. So this gives us 12 for the third class, 17 for the fourth class, and 22 for the fifth class. This finishes off all our lower limits. The upper limits are created in a similar fashion. We want to start by constructing the first class's upper limit. That must be one less than the second class's lower limit. So our first upper limit is 7 minus 1, or 6. We can then create the rest of the upper limits by adding the class width to each of them, giving us 11, 16, 21, and 26. Notice that the last class's upper limit, 26, is actually higher than the largest data value we have, which is 24. We want to keep it this way because we want all five of our data intervals to be the same size. We have now created five equally spaced data ranges that we can sort our 20 data values into. And we have kept those ranges as small as possible. The next step is to find the frequency of each class. The frequency of a class is the total number of data values that fall in that range. For our first class, which has a range of 2 to 6, there are only two data values in our table that fall in that range. They happen to be the first two data values in our table, 2 and 5. To calculate the frequency by hand, I have to physically count how many data values fall in each class range. For the second class, which has a data range of 7 to 11, there are four data values in that range. Those data values are 8, 11, 10, and another 8.
When I finish getting the frequencies for all five classes, I should double check that they add up to 20 because that is the total number of data values that I started with.